Hey guys, welcome back to CCL Biology, the channel for easy to understand biology lessons. If you're looking for help with general, AP, or college introductory biology, then you are in the right place. I am your friendly bio nerd. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about carbon. So if you want a better understanding about carbon, then stay tuned. While you're here, don't forget to hit the like button below if you find this video to be helpful. And if you want more easy to understand biology lessons, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to get updates about new videos that go up every week. Okay, this video is all about carbon. We're going to talk about what carbon is and the enormous role that it plays in biology. Now this is gonna be more of a general overview I'll do another video where I get more into the advanced topics about carbon, like bond angles and isomers and all that jazz. Now, carbon is a chemical element, and it's abundant throughout planet Earth. That's because all living organisms and lots of non-living things are made up of carbon-based structures. Now, what do you think about when you hear the word organic? Some people may think about like a free range farm or a certain section of the grocery store. Well, in the biological sense, when we say organic, an organic compound is a compound that contains carbon. That's it. That's the definition of organic in the biological sense. Compounds without carbon are, of course, called inorganic. Now, this organic versus inorganic compound stuff is a big deal when it comes to photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Now, I have videos on those topics as well. Now, typically, the carbons that are in organic compounds are attached to hydrogens. Hydrogen is another chemical element. Organic compounds that are made of only hydrogen and carbon are called hydrocarbons. Easy enough, right? But carbon can bond with lots of other elements, as we see here to make large, complex molecules that are essential for life. And we're gonna talk more about those bonds in just a little bit. In living organisms, carbon joins with other elements to build what are called biomolecules or macromolecules. Now we have four of these macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Now, just a note, some people don't consider lipids a macromolecule, just a biomolecule. So don't be thrown off if you see a list of macromolecules or that doesn't include lipids. But these four types of molecules are the literal building blocks of life. Now, I'll have videos for each of these four coming up, so be sure to check them out. Now, let's get back to the bonds that carbon forms with other atoms. Each atom of carbon can make up to four bonds. This is because carbon has a valence shell with four unpaired electrons. So let's look here in this illustration. So we see the carbon and these X's represent electrons. So here in the valence shell, we have one, two, three, four electrons and each of them is unpaired. Now I won't go into detail about valence shells and valence electrons here, but I do have the link to my valence electrons video in the description box below. Now carbon can make four single bonds or it can form double or even triple bonds with one or two other atoms. The number of bonds also depends on how many unpaired electrons there are in the other atoms that are bonding with that carbon. Now this valence or this bonding power of carbon makes it unique. It's extremely versatile in the bonds that it can create and the shapes and the sizes of the compounds that come from it. Now let's look at a few examples of the single, double, and triple bonds. So let's start with the single bond. Here I have methane. These two are the same thing. This is what's called the ball and stick model. So methane is CH4. And essentially that just represents one carbon, C and then H4, showing the four hydrogens. Okay. Now, again, since this is a general video, I'm not going to talk so much about these bond angles. I'll do that in another video. But here, the carbon, remember it has four unpaired electrons. So each of those can connect with another electron from another atom. So each of those four electrons in this case has paired up with an electron from a hydrogen atom. So we have this carbon and the unpaired electron here for the carbon, which is at the top of the C, is paired up with an electron from this hydrogen. 
Electron number two from the carbon is paired with this hydrogen. Third electron is paired with this hydrogen and the fourth here, okay? So that's the same thing that we see here. The blue represents the carbon and the four red balls represent the hydrogens. Okay, so that's methane, CH4, okay? Um, now, an organic compound with a double bond here is CO2, carbon dioxide, one that you've probably heard of. So again, we have our ball and stick model, and then here we have the chemical structure here. So we have the carbon and two oxygens, so CO2. Now, in this case, the carbon is double bonded with the oxygens. Now again, carbon has four unpaired electrons, so it can make up to four bonds. Now it wants to bond with oxygen, and oxygen has six electrons in its valence shell, so it needs only two more electrons to be complete. So they can still team up as we see here. So in this case, carbon, here's one single bond with oxygen, so one of its electrons is sharing with one of oxygens. Um, and then carbon again is gonna form another bond with the oxygen. So essentially what this looks like is, again, oxygen has six, it needs two more electrons, so that's one represented in this bond, and two represented in that bond, electrons that are being shared with oxygen. So now oxygen is satisfied. And again, carbon needs four more. So, so far it has one, two of the four other electrons it needs to be complete. So we have that one double bond there. All right, so it's gonna find another oxygen and do the same thing. So we get one, two. So this is gonna satisfy this oxygen. It has six valence electrons, needs two more. It gets one, two. All right, and then carbon, which wants four more. We already have the one, two here. So now we get three and four. All right, so every atom here in this compound is satisfied with the number of electrons it wants to be complete. So we get CO2, carbon dioxide, with a double bond or two double bonds, should I say. All right, and then lastly, um, we can get triple bonds with uh, carbon and another atom. In this case, we see carbon and hydrogen again, but unlike the single bonds that we saw over here with methane, we, have, we do have single bonds and then we have a triple bond. So this is called acetylene or C2H2, and we have um, our 3D model here, okay? And then we can see it kind of better represented here. Okay, now again, carbon needs four additional electrons to complete its valence shell. That's not gonna change, that number doesn't change. Um, what changes is just the bonds that it creates. So to get those four, in this case, carbon is bonding with another carbon. All right, so they're gonna share some electrons here. So we've got one, two, three sets of electrons being shared here. All right, so for each of those carbons, that gives three additional electrons, three additional electrons for this carbon and three additional electrons for this carbon. But each of them still needs one more electron to share, to be complete. All right, so we know that hydrogen has that one electron that it's willing to share. So that makes a great uh, supplement here for this uh, compound. So carbon, in addition to these three electrons it's sharing with the other carbon, is going to bind to a hydrogen and they're gonna share an electron there. So now this carbon has the one, two, three, four electrons it needs to be complete. Same here, this carbon has the one, two, three, four electrons that it needs to be complete. Meanwhile, hydrogen, okay, which just wants one more electron so it can have two to complete its valence shell. Again, be sure to check out my valence electrons video to figure out what the heck I'm talking about with valence. Um, the hydrogen has its one. Each hydrogen has its one extra electron to share. Now, how come we couldn't do a double or a triple bond between the carbon and the hydrogen? Well, again, the hydrogen, remember, needs just one additional electron. So if we tried to do a double or triple bond, that would be too many electrons for the hydrogen. It can't hold that many. But carbon, again, can take an additional four electrons. So it has the space to do a single, double, or even triple bond. Hydrogen can't do that. It can only do single bonds. All right, so we've got three examples here of hydrocarbon compounds. Again, we've got methane, carbon dioxide, and acetylene. There are a gazillion more, so definitely be sure to be on the lookout um, for these kind of compounds. 
And again, I'll do another video where I take a deeper look into carbon um, and its valence and the bonds that it forms. So be sure to check that out as well. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful for you. If so, then please leave a thumbs up in the comments section below. And if you have any remaining questions, then type those in the comments and I'll do my best to provide you with an answer. Thanks again so much for watching CCL Biology, that is Christ-Centered Life. God bless and bye-bye.